My name is Bob Cormash. I'm 78 years old. I'm an Air Force veteran. I came out of the Air Force at Airman First Class. I took my basic at Samson Air Force Base in Geneva, New York. I became permanent party there, and I stayed there for two years. I became a heavy equipment mechanic and operator. After six months of training, of uh, working on heavy equipment, I took the test, and I was issued a all engineering equipment driver's license to operate and work on any vehicle that the Air Force had. I stayed there for two years. Left there, I went to Offutt Air Force Base, SAC headquarters in Omaha, Nebraska. I was there for six, six uh, months. I worked on the O11 and the O11A fire trucks. Primarily, those fire trucks were for foaming the runway, which we had a chance to do one time. A B-52 came in, the landing gear wouldn't come down. So we were all called to go out to form the runway, which we did, and the B-52 landed safely. From there, I was transferred to uh, Cartwright, Labrador, which was an isolated radar site, 922nd ACNW Squadron, and I was up there for one year, or just shy of one year. And I worked on bulldozers, plowed snow, quite a bit up there. I worked on weasels, amphibious, track-driven Second World War vehicles, and those were kind of our toys for off time to go out and roam around the snow. It was on a bay, the Sandridge Bay was the name of the bay. We had one, one road that was three and a half miles down to the bay and from the top of the mountain. And uh, we tried to keep it open the winter time, but it was impossible because of the wind drifts. We had temperatures that went down to 50 below, winds that topped out at 125 knots. And that was quite a storm, and I was out in that also. The only communication we had were what they called pole vaulting. There were big screens mesh screens that would go from one mountain to another mountain that would take our communication. We had three radars that went, uh, one went out 50 miles, one went out 100 miles, one went out 150 miles. And uh, I wasn't in the radar part of it, I was in the mechanic end of it. And uh, we were, it was great duty up there, we ate good put on weight, and when I come home, I had to borrow a uniform. But I guess that was pretty common to a lot of the guys that had shipped out from, from up there to come home. I came home at the tail end of 1957, and uh, was separated from the Air Force, and stayed in the reserves for four more years. Actually, four and a half years, I did an eight-year obligation with them, and I received my honorable discharge in June of 1962, right in the middle of the Cuban crisis. And I was very glad to see the discharge and not orders to ship out again. Okay, so when you joined in, uh, you enlisted in the U.S. Air Force in 19... 54, why did you decide to enlist? Mainly because I didn't want to be drafted. And I knew uh, I had already enlisted into a school that I wanted to go to and uh, to become a builder. And uh, it was a two-year course, $245 a year for tuition. I was going to live at home and work my way through school and I gave it up to go into the service, and I, and I joined the Air Force primarily because I did not want to be drafted. Um, where did you do your basic training? Samson Air Force Base in Geneva, New York. 
And then you went to? Off at Air Force Base in Omaha, Nebraska. Mm -hmm. And then you went overseas, well, sort of overseas, well, to Prairie was, it, Labrador. It was considered overseas yeah. duty at the time. And it was the Cartwright Labrador in uh, Canada, off the coast of Canada. Um, what was your favorite thing to do in Labrador, Canada? Go to the bar and drink. <laughs> <laughs> I could have become an alcoholic, but I didn't. But, uh, I gave it up as soon as I left. Well, what are your favorite memories from Cartwright Labrador? Actually, uh, I enjoyed the work that I did up there, for one thing. Summertime, we used to play a lot of volleyball out there, and uh, we all a lot of the lieutenants, the, the major come out, and the, a lot of guys come out, we played volleyball. There wasn't a whole lot to do up there anyway, and other than going to the either NCO club or the officers club, and we were welcome to do either. We played cards, we played privilege, and uh, believe it or not, we even danced. And it was a lot of fun. Can you talk about the atmosphere around in Cartwright, Labrador? It was a good atmosphere, really. I mean, it, we were there for a reason, and uh, that's and it was, we did our work proudly. And uh, it, it was uh, a source of protecting our country, trying to keep anybody from coming crossing the border, coming down into the America. We did spot a, uh, uh, I believe it was a Russian sub off the coast of Maine that we were had our eyes on. They were just outside the 12 mile limit. I didn't see it because I wasn't being not in radar, but I heard about it. And every now and then the periscope come up and uh, was watching a show. That was back in 1957. Hmm. And it finally left. It didn't cause any trouble, but we were up there actually watching this on our radar. Would you do your service again? I'd do it in a heartbeat. Knowing what I know now, I'd do it the same way. Is there anything else you want to share? I think that's pretty much. Uh, Everything, uh, I was one of the fortunate ones as far as career went. I was in during that time period, but I was one of the fortunate ones that uh, didn't get sent to South Korea. I could have been very easily as not. And uh, they chose to send me north instead of over across, way over. So it, yes, I was one of the lucky ones. Thank <laughs> you.